here's what you will need to make your own crochet Claire cozy. We will be using a Clover Amore size 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is my favorite hook brand to work with, and if you've never tried Clover Amore, I highly recommend it. A tapestry needle for sewing in our tails, a pair of scissors for clipping our yarn, and for our yarn, we will be using Dishy from We Crochet. This is in the color Blush. It is 100% cotton, and it works out great for our coffee cozies. Here is what the cozy will look like once it's finished and you've got it on a coffee cup. This is a grande size from Starbucks. It hugs on there nicely. It doesn't fall down. I mean, it scooted a little, but it doesn't fall down bad um, when you're using it. And when you've got coffee in it, it actually like weighs the cup down so the cozy stays in your hand really nicely. It took me a bunch of tries to get this sizing just right, and I really like the way the dishy yarn works up when it comes to size, so that is why we went with this yarn. As far as gauge goes, a 15 single crochet stitches by 15 rows will give you should give you three and a half by three and a half inch square gauge swatch. If you want to make a gauge swatch, just to make sure you are getting the same gauge as I do. Now let's go ahead and start the pattern. We're going to start by taking our dishy, and the pattern says to make a slip knot and chain eight. So we're going to make a slip knot. And then we are going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to starting in the second chain from our hook, single crochet back down. So not here, this is the first chain. This is the first chain next to our hook. We're not gonna go here. We're gonna go into the next one and place our single crochet. We're gonna single crochet all the way back down the chain, giving us a total of seven single crochets in the row. You may notice that when I single crochet, I yarn under instead of what most people do, which is yarning over. This gives my single crochets a little bit of a twisted effect and it does slightly change the finished piece size. Um, so if you yarn over, you definitely want to do a gauge swatch before you start this project. After we do row one, we're gonna chain one and turn our work. Now for rows two through 32, we're going to single crochet one time in each back bump of the previous row. So normally we would stick our hook right here. Instead of doing that, we're gonna go right here under the back bump, the back loop, I mean, under the back loop, and place our single crochet there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, chain one, and turn our work. We're gonna repeat that for 30 more rows, giving us a total of 32 rows. And this is creating the brim portion of our Coffee Cozy. So we are making this portion right now. And after we finish our 32 rows, we will join it into a circle, and then we will start creating the body portion right here. So I'm going to go off camera and finish the rest of my 32 rows. Remember to chain one and turn your work at the end of each row. Also, just a pro tip, make sure you're not making your chain up ones too tight. If you do, your Coffee Cozy will not stretch appropriately and it might not fit your average size coffee cup. So make sure you're not keeping the tension crazy tight on your chain ones. You don't need them loose, but you don't want them like as tight as you can get them either. And I will come back after I finish row 32 and we will join our brim to make a circle. Okay, I just finished my 32 rows for the brim and I wanted to grab my handy little tape measure for my analytical friends who like to have exact measurements. So I'm going to give my brim a nice tug so all of the stitches can fall into place. So if you're checking your gauge, I mean your the length of your brim, go ahead and tug on it first. And it, it's very hard to measure because if I pulled on it, it's the, the 
rib stitch so I'm just going to do the best that I can. We're just shy of nine inches. It's like eight and three quarters. But if I were to stretch it, I mean, it would stretch for days. So I hope that helps somebody. Now we are going to take the front, the last row, the 32nd row, and the first row, and we're going to just close them up together. And that's how we're going to create the circular portion of our coffee cup. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch of row 32 and insert my hook into the first stitch of row one and place a slip stitch right there. Boom. Okay, that first one's always a little tricky. Into the second stitch of row 32, into the second stitch of row one and place a slip stitch. I'm gonna do this all the way down, just joining row 32 with row one. For a total of seven slip stitches. Okay, now we're gonna get that tail out of the way and it's you can chain one and this is the wrong side of our work because it's where the big seam is that we just added. So I'm just going to flip my work right side out. So I am now looking at the right side of my work and we are gonna start on the body portion of our, our Claire Cozy. Um, so our rows are starting back at one. So one through 32 for the brim. Now we're starting back at row one for the body. We're going to single crochet 32 all the way around the opening of our brim one. And we will be making our own spots for our hook to go since it is on the raw edge of our work. But there's 32 rows, so there'll be 32 single crochets, one at the end of each row. Thirty one and thirty two join into the top of our first single crochet right there and chain one. Okay, for row two, we will be working our first puff stitch row. We're going to start by putting our first puff stitch right here in the space right up next to our starting chain. To make a puff stitch, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, and pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert, grab, pull up, that's two. Grab, pull up, that's three. One more. Grab, pull up. After you get all of these loops from doing it four times, now we're going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops on our hook to finish out our puff stitch. And then we're going to chain one to secure it. So every time you finish a puff stitch, you got to do that chain one after. Now we're going to skip the next stitch down here and we're going to place a puff stitch in the third stitch. So yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Pull through all loops on our hook and chain one. That's two. Skip this stitch, go into this one. And we are going to keep putting puff stitches all the way around, skip a stitch, put a puff, skip, puff, skip, puff, until we get back to the beginning and we will have 16 puff stitches total. So after I get back around, I will show you how we join into the top of our first puff stitch and get ready for row three. So I'll be right back. Okay, I am doing my last puff stitch in row two. Chain one to secure. Now we're going to join into the top of our first puff stitch. So right here, that's where we're going to join our yarn and chain one. We will not be turning our work anymore. We will be facing the same way every time. Now for row three, we are going to put our puff stitch all the way over here in this first chain one gap created in row two. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook all the way into that gap, but you don't have to go into the chain space. Just go completely under it into the gap itself 
and place your puff stitch there. Four, pull through and chain. There we go. Continue to place puff stitches in each chain one space from the previous row until we get back around to the beginning and we will have 16 puff stitches total. Join into the top of our first puff stitch, chain one, and get ready for row four. Okay, I have 15 puff stitches, so I have one more in this last chain one gap to finish out row three. Okay, now we're gonna join into the top of our first puff stitch, which is going to be right there. And chain one. For row four, we are going to puff stitch right here in this first chain one space that was created in the previous row. So that's where our first puff stitch is gonna go. And once we get all the way around, our last puff stitch is gonna land right here. So I'm gonna continue for row four, making puff stitches all the way around until I get to 16. Then I will join into the top of the first puff stitch, chain one, and get ready for row five. Okay, finishing up on my 16th puff stitch for row four. Now we're gonna join into the top of our first puff stitch and chain one. So now you can see what we've got going. You can see it's making the nice little mushroom shape so far. Now we are going to get ready for row for row five, which is another row of puff stitches. Our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here in the first chain one space created from the previous row. So yarn over, stretch your hook all the way over to that gap for your first puff stitch. Continue to puff stitch all the way around. Again, for a total of 16 puff stitches in the row. We are almost done, guys. I will see you when I get back to the beginning of this row. Coming up to the beginning of the row, I have one more puff stitch right here in the last chain one gap. Chain one, and then I'm gonna join my work into the top of my first stitch right there and chain one. Now we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, row six, which is our last row of puff stitches before we have our decrease row. So our first puff stitch is going to go right here in the space right up next to our starting chain. So no big reaching over for the first one. Pull through. I'm going to continue to puff stitch all the way around again for a total of 16 puff stitches in the row. And this is our last row that will have 16 puff stitches. The next row, which is row seven, will have a decrease, a puff stitch decrease, and I will show you how to do that. And then we have two more rows to finish off after row seven, and this baby is done. Coming up on my 16th puff stitch in row six, chain one, join into the top of our first puff stitch and chain one. Now for row seven, we're going to start by placing our first puff stitch over there in that chain one gap, just like we've been doing. Now our next stitch is going to be a puff stitch decrease, and it's gonna be made over these two chain one gaps. So we're taking these two chain one gaps and making it just one puff stitch instead of two. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook under the first chain, yarn up, pull up a loop. We're gonna do that for a total of three times. That's two and then three. Now we're gonna yarn over and go into the next chain gap for three. That's one, two, three. Now you have a gigantic amount of loops on your hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops and then chain one to secure it. And you can see our puff stitch decrease right there. We took two chain one gaps and put one stitch instead of two. Now we're just going to continue to puff stitch in the chain one gaps all the way around, this time giving us 15 puff stitches in the row instead of the 16 that we had in all of the other rows. 
So I will come back as soon as I finish this row and we will do the last two rows here on camera, sew in our tails and call it a day. Coming up on my last puff stitch in the row. Chain one, join into the top of our first puff stitch right here. Right now it looks like we're making a tiny little baby Easy Meetsy Claire Bun Beanie almost, but it's a coffee cozy. So now we are going to get ready for row eight, which is our first row of single crochets. And we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around, giving us a total of 30 single crochets in the row. So when you get to these chain one gaps, this time we're actually going into the chain and not just around it like we were with the puff stitches. You can see it's in the actual chain. And then into the tops of the puff stitches. Gonna keep doing that all the way around. It's gonna give us a total of 30 single crochets in the row. Okay, we are almost back to the beginning. Two more stitches. Here we go. Now we're going to join into the top of our first single crochet. Chain one. And for the last row, which is row nine, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around again for a total of 30 single crochets. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Join into the top of our first single crochet, and now we can tie off by clipping with our scissors. Making sure to leave a tail long enough for sewing in. Now we have our finished little Claire Coffee Cozy. Isn't she classy? We're going to flip her inside out and use our tapestry needle to sew in these two tails. A project with two tails? I am not complaining. This is how I sew in my tails. I like to just make sure I go over myself a couple times so it gets really good and knotted up underneath all those fibers and stitches. Okay. Last one. Okay. And now she's all done. Let me get a few measurements for my more analytical friends. Don't worry, my crochet BFF is very analytical. So I got you guys my handy dandy tape measure. She is four and a half inches tall and four and a half inches wide in her widest spot. I would have guessed she was taller than she was wide, but four and a half and four and a half, easy to remember. Now let's try her on a coffee cup. The final test. Will she fit a grande hot coffee cup from Starbucks? <laughs> like a glove. There she is in all her glory. Easy peasy. In case you did not know, this pattern was designed after the Claire Bun Beanie, which is my best-selling, most popular pattern up to date. I will link it for you guys in the description below. This summer, I will be coming out with an iced coffee version, so get excited for that. Hopefully, it will still be using Dishy Cotton yarn. It will just be all the way around the bottom of the cup instead of open like this. If you wanted to make one to fit a venti-sized cup, Let's see how it looks on a venti size cup. I think it looks fine like this. It does its job with the hand holding. So I think this is actually fine. I was going to say add another row, but I don't think that would even work. So this works for venti and grande size cups. 
very cute, very earth conscious. I hope you guys like this pattern. If you do, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you would like to be notified every time I release a new video. And I will catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks so much. Bye.